About a month ago, when I was in Austria and I was getting treatment for MS, so I was he um, receiving heavy cortisone um, treatment that like, made me feel really bad. And I also faced quite a lot of difficult situations with my family that I didn't expect. I barely have any contact with them, but I needed to tell them that I'm ill. And they turned around and yelled at me more or less. And like, so like everything sort of culminated that I was really sick. I didn't really have somewhere to stay. And the people that I needed or I, I wanted to talk to weren't really helping me. <laughs> so it was like this complete implosion again, but like I didn't, didn't I didn't expect anything from them. I didn't really think that there was gonna be like after thirty four years of my life that my mother's gonna turn around and like hug me. Like I didn't. It wasn't really something I expected. But there was something about this cortisone therapy, and I was feeling really, really unwell at the same time. And I, there was like a few occasions, um, I remember two, like, specifically, <laughs> one I was, <laughs> I was um, standing on the on the, um, attic, because I was smoking, <laughs> and um, as I was looking down in the at, um, at the very steep roof, like, just all of a sudden this impulse come like, man, this shit's just gonna get worse, you may as well just jump. And it was just an impulse, and it was a very foreign, like I, like I haven't had this in a very long time. I'd say probably about three years because I haven't really felt depressed or definite suicidal. Like um, to me, the thought, like the thought of suicide is abhorrent. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned this, but like suicide is never the victim's fault. Suicide is, has got nothing to do with the victim because it's society around the victim that first of all makes the victim feel this way. We should be more welcoming and more loving and this shouldn't be, we shouldn't, it shouldn't, like if you all lived together in a village and you all knew each other, you'd notice if someone get depressed, got depressed. Now we're so far from each other and we hide the depression and we need to hide it with strength and antidepressants and whatever. Anyway, what I was going to say <laughs> it, about about um, the suicidal thoughts, because this is important. I recognise that I do not want to die. I never wanted to die. I always had suicidal thoughts, but I didn't really want to die. I didn't think it was worth living, but I didn't want to die. And these suicidal thoughts came from the way that I was feeling physically. So... This is why I knew I don't need to deal with this thought. This is not, this is not a real thing in my life. So just ignore it because it's only a phase because you feel shit right now. And usually for me, it was always like one or two days where like I f have these suicidal thoughts and I just go like next day, next day, next day. And, um, after a few days, it actually does get better. While you're in the throes of it, it doesn't seem like it'll ever get better. But my trick or my, the only way that I, there's so many times in my life where I went to bed and went like, I don't think I should, I don't think I should wake up tomorrow. And every time I just went, just right now, it probably feels bad if you sleep, maybe tomorrow it'll feel different and that pretty much that got me through my life <laughs> because I was very 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 depressed and like I think I was on the brink of suicide for so many years of my life and um, it's that's why I'm talking about this now again because it was horrible it was like it seems so freaking real like it just seems like God is telling you this is the only logical thing. And all it actually is, is your ego. Your ego is trying to punch you down. It's trying to screw you. It's trying to oppress you. It's trying to make the worst possible drama it possibly can. And um, the, you know, the best thing you can do is talk about it. 
I actually tried to talk to people about it. Like, I, I will obviously talk about it as well. I did talk to people about it, but in Austria it was really hard to try and talk about this. People were looking at me physically and they didn't even care about how I'm doing emotionally, which should have been blatantly obvious when they looked at me because like I was really struggling, I couldn't eat and there was like, I didn't know what was going on and nobody was really talking to me, they were just testing me to death. <laughs> anyway, um, so the key thing about, so the suicidal thoughts like completely went away after three days and I improved physically and as I improved physically, like it completely evaporated again. So that to me was, for me, was the proof that Oh, it was actually just a physical thing. It was like I was physically down and I was depressed because of this, and maybe because of the medication as well. Um, but still, like it doesn't make any difference why you feel suicidal. It's a horrible thing. That's why I wanted to talk about it because I know a lot of people feel it, and a lot of people think about it. And to me, it's the hardest thing because, like, suicide is the most. It's, it's the saddest thing that's happening in our society, I think. Like, the way that we avoid talking about our mental health, the way that we blame the victim victims for being depressed, the way we, like, the way we shun people, the way we label them with mental health issues. We're all human beings and we need to stop looking down at each other and start talking with each other. And suicide is never ever the person's fault. The person never ever, it's never okay that they wanted to end their life. They wanted to end their life because of the ideas that were in their head, not because they as a human being were not worthy of living. Every human being is worthy, more than worthy of living. The people that come up from the most horrendous backgrounds usually are the most valuable people. So like every person, person is worth saving. And the worst thing that we do in society is we blame the victims. He killed himself. No, we are responsible that this person felt so sad, so lonely, so isolated, that they thought this is the better, the easier way out. And this responsibility is on us. It's not them. They didn't kill themselves. We let them fall as a society, as a community, as human beings. So, I just want to reiterate, if you are feeling suicidal or depressed, talk to anybody, anybody, you don't need to take, talk to a psychiatrist if you can't pay, if you can't get a psychiatrist, like talk to your friends, family, they don't have to be professionals, it's just about you speaking as well, mm, and like yeah you get feedback and you'd be surprised that sometimes from the most random sources I got the best advice. So. And um, the, what, just to bring it back again to the thing that helps you the most if you're depressed or suicidal is spending time in the present moment. So not on the phone, not on TV, not on Netflix, not just go outside and play with a dog or watch the birds or go climbing or go skateboarding or go do something that makes you fully embrace the present moment and then slowly the nagging ego will silent shut up <laughs> um yeah so i'm i'm doing really well now and like i'm not gonna kill myself because there's no way that i, I, I would just really needed to tell you about the suicidal feelings to share just in case anybody out there is need someone to connect to really, you know. If you feel like you're the only one that's feeling this, you're not 
There's so many people that are feeling this. We're just too stupid to talk about it. No, we don't. People are too scared to talk about it. But let's start this conversation. Thank you very much. Yeah, what am I going to say? Let's start this conversation and just open up. Life's so much easier when everything's out in the open. Thank you very much for listening. Talk to you soon. One love. Uh, this is one of the rare occasions where I listened back to what I was saying in the video and I realized that this could easily be misunderstood. Um, what I meant was um, when suicide happens, I meant that society is responsible. As in, if somebody doesn't feel like they're comfortable to talk about their depression and their feelings in our society, we have failed a society. So I didn't at all mean that if someone you know killed themselves, you should be responsible. Like, or you should feel responsible, you should feel guilty. Because um, I've been involved in quite a few suicides, unfortunately. Very different people, very different occasions. And what struck me the most were, was that um, usually people that were quite far removed from the victim felt the most guilt and they felt like they were the person that could have changed it they were the person that could have like like end like ended the suicidal thoughts if they only knew and there's actually like the sad thing is there's not really much we can do we can be there for our friends we can create an open talk with it amongst our friends but unfortunately i sort of blame society and society's pressure that makes people afraid to speak about it and that's all I meant if you have lost someone to suicide um, like it's a tragedy it's horrible it's like um, everybody carries away this deep guilt and um, this feeling of what if I've done had done this or what if this is and like the true fact of it is if someone really wants to kill themselves they have excluded all the options they don't want to deal with it they don't want to talk about it they just want to die i'm not speaking for everybody but like i'm just saying that it's super hard to get into that it's super hard to get in between that thought i had a conversation with my psychiatrist about this because my ex was threatening to kill himself and um, I knew it was a threat and I thought it wouldn't he's not actually going to kill himself he's just trying to blackmail me blackmail me but I was worried that he's going to kill himself and um, I, I said like what can I do I've talked to him I've offered him my help I've given him suicide hotlines I've tried everything and he said as a psychiatrist and then he just looked at me and he said you know the problem is with suicide if they want to kill themselves there's nothing you can do and that that sentence like a sad like obviously there's everything I would want to do but it's sort of also understanding that you are not really responsible for this other human being per se it freed me from any thoughts of guilt or anything like that. So I in no way in this video did I mean that you are responsible for letting this person fall. I'm trying to comment on society and the way that we deal with suicide and mental health and anxiety and PTSD and drug addiction. Like you can, everything I say more or less I'm applying for drug addiction and all of this as well. So it's a sad topic, but um, a very, very important topic. I'm not here to talk about like, the fun parts of life. I want to talk about the issues. I want to, you know, humbly look at life and humbly look at what is going on and how can we start working together to make this a nicer place, you know? And the way that the suicide rates are just going up and up and amongst young young teens and 
you know, they haven't even had a taste of life yet and they feel so depressed just because of their phones. You know, it's, and the trend doesn't seem like it's going to change anytime soon. So I think we need to talk about it, you know, we need to talk about it for the youth, for the younger generation. They're watching us trying to be strong. They're watching us pretending like we're not sad prevailing and we need to show them our vulnerabilities we're human we're not superman we're not disney superstars we're human beings and we need to talk about what we're struggling with openly the more we hide it the deeper it pulls us down into the hole so, and talking about it is the best way like i spent about 15 years of my life being too afraid to talk about it and then slowly I started going to the psychiatrist, slowly I started speaking to my friends and then it just turned into this avalanche and now I'm like an open book. So now because I've dealt with it all it's no longer scary so I can talk about anything and when something comes up and somebody says blah 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 sexual abuse like Normally, I would feel uncomfortable and like I'd need to leave the conversation because I know something about it and I'm hiding it. And now somebody brings up sexual abuse and then I see it as my opportunity to um, tell them my first-hand account because I don't care personally anymore. So this is one of the many joys of this mind state when you free yourself from your ego from what you thought you were then you just see things as they are um also what i don't uh, fail to mention in every country there's a suicide hot hotline and there's people you can call and talk to and it doesn't matter who they are actually it might be quite good if you can't see them um, it's just about you speaking about what's going on as soon as you speak about it you start to feel better and, you know, you don't know, like every time something bad happened and then a month later I go like, oh my God, thank God, God, thank God I was alive for this now. How could I even think of ending it? And in the dark moments, you can't see that. You just need to soldier on in the dark moments and then everything, yeah. The closer you get or the more you spend in the present moment, the freer you become and the easier life becomes. And then you can um, talk about anything like me. And um, thank you very much for listening. Sorry for the postscriptum, but I, th I felt it was very necessary to add it and not make a separate video. And talk to you soon. One well, love.